Hey everyone, it's Andy from Electro Petrol Head. Now, there's been a lot of news recently regarding Tesla potentially closing some of their showrooms. And um, in this big town stroke city where we live, we have our own showroom. So that's actually one of the places I went to a lot when we were researching and eventually buying our Tesla. So I've got to know a lot of the people in there and naturally this news has come as quite a negative to me because Yes, okay, it costs money to have a showroom, but especially in our case, the showroom was essential in purchasing the car. So what I thought might be quite interesting is just to explain our story and explain how the various elements of what Tesla offered back then fell into place and gave us the car we now have on our driveway. So we decided that we were going to look for a new family car and we looked at the normal Porsche um, Macan, Porsche Cayenne. We looked at the various AMG Mercedes. We looked at BMW M5 a little bit, but because it didn't come in the state, it wasn't really a priority and um, didn't really fancy an X5. Um, so we looked at quite a few different cars, but coming from a tech background like I do, Tesla had been on my radar um, since a about 2010, I think it was. So, what we did is we went into the showroom and sat in the car, looked at the car and realized that actually the Model S, which is the smaller of the two cars they offered back then, along with the Model X, actually had a ton of storage space. So we saw sort of looking at it thinking, this could be really cool because it's the S that I wanted, but it could work as a full family car. So there's a lot of, benefits for us and it also was a bit cheaper so it's all good so the lady who I spoke to was called Bryony and she said to me look the next stage is test drives so I took her contact details and I dropped her an email and I said is it possible we can do two but test drives back to back one in the s and one in the x just to make sure that we're not missing out on anything and she said okay great yeah we can do that so I went along and I met my salesperson called Tom. And he said, okay, we'll go out the Model S first. And I said, great, well, we live on the outskirts of Milton Keynes, which is um, uh, where the showroom was. And he said, great, let's just go around, drive some of the roads you drive every day. Because we live in a very quiet uh, neighborhood, so there's lots of speed bumps. So that was one thing we wanted to test. So we went out, we drove around. Uh, Kate had a drive and we went back. Brilliant. Great car. We then did it again with a Model X and this time we went up the motorway, turned around, came down and went to a Tesla supercharger. Randomly, if you can hear any little random noises, that's my dog just wandering around. So anyway. So yeah, we went up the motorway, uh, Kate drove, I drove, went to a Tesla supercharger, um, got to understand all of that. And then we came back to the showroom and Tom said, no pressure, go away, have a think about it. The nice thing about Tesla is they're not salespeople in as much as they are going, right, and if you buy this car today, we'll do this finance rate and we'll knock off this and we'll throw in some mats and all that bollocks that the rest of the car industry does. Tesla not like that. They know that the cars sell themselves. They don't need to force you into a sale. Um, they also don't discount and they don't um, chuck in freebies, which is a nice way of of working because you don't end up with a situation where your neighbour has a car who paid five grand less. So it's, um, it's a nice, fair playing field. So a few days later, I emailed Tom and I said, Hi Tom, love the car. I think the Model S is for us because... Uh, handles a little bit better, it's a little bit cheaper, and we don't need a Model X yet, and it's the Model S that I've always wanted. He said, great. I said, the thing that's bugging me is that if we did a road trip in this car, away from Tesla superchargers, how would it cope? Can I take a car for a weekend? Now, I don't think Tesla really do this anymore. The reason I asked is a friend of mine did this about a year before me. And 
what you'll soon realize with Tesla, if you're just coming into the world of Tesla, is they're such a fast growing company and they change their minds quite a lot because as they grow, it's harder to do things. Now, when my friend took a car for a weekend, they were basically throwing him the keys saying, try this, try this, you know, it's really good. Because Tesla were a newer car then, not very many people own them. So they were actively lending the cars out and saying, go and borrow this for a week because they had the cars, so they could do it. When I was driving, uh, so when I was purchasing, it was a lot different scenario because there was a lot more demand. There were multiple test drives happening every single day. So it was a lot harder for Tesla to offer me a car. So Tom came back and said, look, I can give you a car for a weekend. I can't give it to you for a week because we've got a, basically a full calendar of test drives. But Monday's a quiet day. So if you took it on a Friday afternoon, had it back to me Monday, we could do it. So that was brilliant. Now, I don't know what the situation is. I, I, I assume it's harder to get a couple of days test drives. But anyway. So I picked up the car, brought it home, showed Kate. We had a little drive around while the girls were still at school. And then we picked them up and we set off. Now, the way I was going to test the car was put it in a scenario that is as difficult as possible, to put it lightly. Um, we felt that if we went to North Wales, which is literally barren of superchargers. There's one in Telford, which is just on the outskirts of England before you head into Wales. So we thought, right, let's book a hotel without destination charging, because again, that would have made life easy. So we booked this hotel with no chargers. We knew there was a supercharger at Telford. So what we did is we drove up, stopped off in Telford, and had some dinner in the services. And at that point, we charged the car fully. We drove to the hotel, and then we just stayed overnight. The next day, we woke up with 90, no, about 80% charge. So not a full battery, because we just driven from the supercharger. I can't remember the exact numbers. We then headed up into an area of North Wales, which is gorgeous. If you ever visited North Wales, then you'll, in, you'll love it. So we headed to an area called the Evo Triangle. As you know, I'm a petrol head. It's in the name of the channel. And I knew about the Evo Triangle. It's where Evo Magazine used to go to test drive a lot of their cars. Um, it then became busier and busier and it was harder to test drive them there without, um, you know, constantly having to ask questions at every lay-by. So they go, they still go there a bit, but not as much. Anyway, it's a well-known triangle of roads, quite a clever name, where you can do a lap. Um, it's public roads, so you've got to respect the laws. So you know speeding, all that but what you can do is drive some roads which are a lot of undulations, some nice drifty corners, not drifty, nice flowing corners, and some tight corners, and then it's a real nice mix, so you get to understand if a car handles. So we did a couple of laps of that each. Uh, we stopped off at a, um, a big adventure playground so the girls could play. Um, we got some lunch, and we just explored North Wales in the car. And then we went to Demon Tweaks, which is a big um, motorsport shop. And then we looped back down to Telford, recharged and went back to the hotel. Um, so that gave us a good idea of what sort of range the car had. So that was a 100D. So it had, you know, an extra third battery compared to my 75D. But there are plenty of ways we could have made that easier on charging. In the, you know, I assume now, even compared to when we did this about, you know, getting on for a year ago now, there's more chargers everywhere. Um, there's also talk of a Tesla supercharger coming to that area. So all that would make life even easier. So we were looking at this scenario and going, okay, so we have just put the car in a situation which is about as extreme as you can get. And it coped brilliantly. If we went to places for lunch with destination chargers, if there was another Tesla supercharger there, and if there was, say, a Polo or Ecotricity uh, rapid charger, 
in the area. It would have made life even easier. So even, even without those extras, it coped. And the car handled really nicely. And actually, um, it handles differently to um, a big engine petrol or diesel car. Um, the weight is obviously low down, so that helps. But equally, you don't get the, like with a big petrol car with the engine at the front, you, and often rear wheel drive, you get a different handling setup than you do in a Tesla. So that's why some people, when they first drive a Tesla, and our dog Bertie's just having a good old um, scratch around in his bed. Um, that's why some people, when they first drive a Tesla, they, they say it handles differently and they think that is a negative. But once you get to know how it handles, it's actually a pretty good car, especially considering the size and how much luggage you can get in. Bertie, shush. Thank you. So, the next day, we, um, we thought, okay, we'll go and see Kate's mum, and we'll go to Cadbury World. Now, Cadbury make proper chocolate, none of this Hershey stuff, so I just annoyed all the Americans. But anyway, the joke is, you know. Um, so we went to Cadbury World, which is in Birmingham. So we drove into Birmingham, parked up there for the day. Again, um, if they don't already now, I wouldn't be surprised in the future, there will be charges there. So we could have charged up there. Um, so that would have made life easier. Anyway, so we, we spent a few hours there and then we drove all the way over to Peterborough where Kate's mum lives. And we spent a few hours there and I took them for some test drives and natural and test drive, you just do launches basically constantly. So really bad for, for the battery in the terms of um, how much uh, energy each <laughs> launch was using. It's not that bad. Um, but yeah, so I, I wasn't driving e economically, I suppose is a way to, I could have saved a lot of um, energy and increased the range quite easily. Anyway, so we did that and then we drove home. Um, and then the next day was Monday, dropped the girls off at, um, at the time play school. And we, I did a loop round and actually went to a local supercharger because I didn't want to drop the car back to Tesla with like, very little range. So we did that, got um, a bit more charge for them and dropped it back to the service center. Um, and we were sold. You know, it was a done deal. So we actually bought the car in the service center in Milton Keynes with Tom, the salesperson. Tom and I were having um, a you know, can of Coke each or something, just chatting away. And Tom gave Kate um, the laptop and Kate just stood there and just put in our details and paid the four grand deposit. And... Um, that was it. It was, as, you know, simple as that. So in a way, we did an online purchase because even if you book, even if you purchase them in the showroom, you still um, are using just a computer, access to the internet, go to tesla.com and you order. So yeah, that was our extended test drive. And to me, it really sold the car to us that it's completely usable. Um, on long journeys, it's so comfortable. Kate kept on telling me how relaxed I was after a, you know, a two hour driving leg. It was just, it's, um, it's nice having that power there if you need it. Without, um, I'm gonna sound like a totally non petrol head here, but big V8s and stuff are amazing. But if you're just doing mileage, sometimes you don't want uh, the noise of the engine for like two or three hours in a row. It's quite nice just to cruise along like a Rolls Royce in silence, um, just having your music playing. So we saw the car from a lot of different angles and we really did fall for it, uh, put the order in, and then we had the nice sort of process of the updates and my dog's just jumped up onto the tripod. Um, so yeah, so we put the order in and we had a nice sort of process of waiting for the um, the car to be delivered. And then it was, and the ownership journey started. So in summary, 
I'm glad that Tesla seem to be going back on their word of closing all these showrooms. They really did make a big difference to my purchase. Um, and I would like to count a few of the people as friends now. And, um, you know, I do just pop in and just have a quick chat if, if, they're, if they've got no one there. And it's nice because they get to update me on bits and pieces and I update them on, you know, what um, my ownership experience is like. And then they go, oh, well, have you thought about X, Y and Z? Because um, it is new to us. Um, we're learning as we go. And that's a really nice part of the ownership is that you do feel appreciated by the salespeople. So that was good. Cars are brilliant long distance and you can take them to really fun roads and have a lot of fun driving them. They're not just an A to B family or business car. So if you're still watching this fair play, um, hope you enjoyed a little bit of insight into our test drive experience. Feel free to comment below. Let me know um, what your experiences are. Have you test driven one? Do you own one? What do you think? What's you know your favorite trip in it? Um, I'm gonna plan some trips this year, um, vlog them, just show you how it all goes. Um, I've got, I'm well overdue meet a number of a mate and doing South Wales, and I also fancy doing a proper long journey and going up to Scotland and seeing another friend up there. So there's plenty more coming to the channel, and in the meantime, I'll just keep doing these little sort of um, background and experience and FAQs and all that type of stuff. But if there's anything you want to know about electric cars, Teslas in specific, anything you want to ask an owner, electropetrolhead.com and all the social media channels. If you just search for Electric Petrol Head, you'll find me, and um, the links are down below. So thanks for watching, and see you soon. Bye.